Thank you for joining us for the quick insight to how the cover shot was done and a heads up that there's a really, really cool book out there for Christmas all about Archives New Zealand. Okay, so what you see here is a photograph of the stacks as you guys would see them if you walked in there right now. Some uh, climbing frames, ladders, stools, that kind of thing. And that's what our staff here at the head office in Wellington uh, used to retrieve these boxes off the shelf. Uh, pull out the archives that we need. The author, Ray Wairu, wanted a, a specific kind of shot. It doesn't necessarily say use the stacks, uh, but what he did want is a sense of scale to convey quite how much stuff Archives New Zealand actually has, but also an image which had a bit of mystery and a bit of enlightenment about it to go with the title of the book, Secrets and Treasures. With that in mind, Secrets and Treasures, Mystery and Enlightenment, what we did was translate that into a photograph of the stacks which had light and shadow. The light is the important bit because what we really, really needed to do was to make sure that that light was coming from out amongst the shelves where these archives live to give that sense that the archives were shedding light, telling the stories. Now we have a little bit of a problem because as you can see here the lighting in the stack area are these fluorescent st uh, strip lights up in the roof. They give a really nice flat even lighting, it's perfect for everyday working down there when we're doing our normal jobs, but it's no good for this photograph. The lighting's too flat, it's too even, and it's actually coming from the wrong direction, it's coming from above as opposed to from amongst the shelving itself. So what do we do? Well we switch the lights out and we have a light show. You'll notice here the little red dot in the middle of the picture, that's the camera and that's on. The red dot goes on when it's taking its photograph. Now it's a four minute exposure. The camera actually took a four minute photograph each time we fired it off. It's pitch black down there. Our eyes adjusted to it quite happily, so we could move around down there quite easily. What that really means is that we can take control of the light and actually make it come from where we need it to come from. So there's myself behind the camera making sure everything has been lit correctly and the exposures coming together as we wanted and kind of orchestrating the other five guys who are down amongst the stacks moving between one bay and the next firing off these flash guns manually so it was all done in sequence now these are normal flash guns that you would buy to stick on the top of your SLR camera we are using eight of them all coordinated so that lights don't go off while somebody's moving through the picture and then they appear in the photo. It might seem like this wouldn't actually make much of a picture, but the reason we're firing it over and over and over again is to kind of build up the exposure one after the other. It's uh, very similar to a technique photographers call light painting. And it allows us to build up the picture exactly as we want it. Just explain that light itself decreases in its power and its intensity over distance. So those boxes which are up close to the camera, right at the front of the picture, they actually required very, very little in the way of a uh, number of flashes to make up the right exposure in the shot. But the boxes in the end of the alleyway, down at the far end of the stacks there, they required a lot more. So there are many, many more flash fires going off to be able to light those up. Quite interesting and uh, quite tricky to be able to build up the correct exposure through the whole shot using that. So what do we end up with? Here on the left this is the shot that came out of the camera and on the right is the retouched version. So you'll see there are a few subtle differences. The left hand one uh, that's got a little bit up in the corner, up in the roof there. We've done a little bit of work on the actual stacks themselves to increase that light and shadow, just darken them down a little bit and get the overall effect in the shot correct. Here you'll see this is the end result. Random House have done their um, graphic design work, they've put the title on, put the author's name on, made it look cool. And they've also added in a few of the archives from within the book just to kind of give it a little bit more extra visual flavour and really make that book cover pop. The book is launched on the 16th of October and very shortly after that you should start to see it on the shelves uh, all over the country in time for um, Christmas sales. We encourage you to have a look and get yourself a copy. It's a really good insight into how uh, Archives New Zealand works and some of the things that we have here. Hi, my name is Dave, I work at Archives New Zealand and we've got some uh, friends helping us out today. Chrissy, Alan, Sam, 
Bruce and Brent. We're in here, we're going to try and photograph the book cover for the Archives New Zealand book. So what we're going to try and show you now is uh, a whole heap of uh, mischief and photographic genius going on and uh, we hope to kind of show you as you look down the stacks here how we're going to light the cover and the end result. <laughs> 